Even if you meditate a lot already and you've been with me many years, you still have to remember the five precepts, okay? Yes, yes. yes. The first one is ahimsa, no harming, no killing anyone, any being. The second is what? No lying. No lying. No lying? Fine, it doesn't matter, second or third. The third? No stealing. No stealing. Right. The fourth? Yeah, no fooling around too many women, too many men, okay? Five? Ah! No intoxicants, yeah, like cigarette, drugs, alcohol, yeah, even gambling, you know, anything that make you addicted and, and also damage your health and your family relationship, yeah, and then ruin your property and all that. Okay, that's good, at least you remember. And you have to check yourself every day with a diary, understand? Yes. Whether what you have done all day is correct or not correct, yeah? You must. A Buddha who is not correct is an incorrect Buddha, okay? <laughs> now you know that already, yeah? Mm, so, I just want correct Buddha, no? I don't want fake Buddha. Now, you have to be careful like that because it's so easy to be tempted. Oh, why not? You know? It's very easy for us to be tempted, yeah? So we always have to check it, control our thinking. Oh, the candy is over there, why not taking some, you know? Nobody's looking. Or oh, master can buy more anyway. Yeah? It's not the reason for you to take it. You see? Because I don't ask you to contribute. You should not think that you could, you know, and should take everything else from me. That is not correct. Yeah? I don't take something from you, not necessarily that I'm rich, okay? I just I want to keep clean. I make an example for you. We all have to. And for, for the same reason, you should pay when you come to any center to eat. I pay also here. The food, I pay also. I pay for all the residents who stay here as well. So that the, the, the money you pay is just for you. Because if we eat, then you're short. You understand? They calculate it, for example, for 10 persons. Eh? And if we eat like 13 persons, then the food will be different, short, okay? So if I'm here, I pay also. So it's not because I want you to pay because I want your money, nothing like that. Huh? Even if I'm rich, you pay. Yeah? And whatever belongs here, you leave it alone. You are allowed to use it, to share it, but not to take it. And if I say no, it's no. Anybody who say no is no. Not just master say no. Especially master say no, then it's no, no, no. Understand this? Yes. You understood? Yes. Good. I hope it's the last time I have to tell you about the five precepts. The reason I did not elaborate about all this all the time because I trusted that you understood. I trusted that you are intelligent and you're morally high enough to come in for initiation. That is the basic. The five precepts is the basic to graduate into initiation. So I did not keep telling about all this, I thought, you know. We established for a long time already, over two decades already, and I have to still talk about this. We have to let it flow. Whatever we don't use, we must give it away, sell it, Make it recycle, yeah? We can't just keep something we don't use. That you know already, or? Yes or no? Yes. I did say this before or no? Yes. And the five precept is clear, right? Yes. Yes. And what did you come from initiation for? You know, right? Yes. Use your power for what? Huh? To what? To what? To what? To go to the future of God, to go to heaven. Yes, to go to heaven. I did not promise you that you come for initiation and then you have a bigger meditation hall or something. <laughs> that, that was not the condition of initiation, right? No. no. 
I did not even say that I will buy each center meditation hall, no? And you know, before that, I even uh, give them some money to pay off the old center already. It's not much, but just to pay off their, you know, mortgage so they don't have to continue paying. I also really give something already, and every time I go there, I pay my meal, you know? And I pay for some other stuff. Also. I'm not telling you this to boast about it. I'm just telling you that I did already some, yeah? So I should not ask more than what I'm willing to give, yeah? I don't know. If you really want a bigger meditation hall or something like that, I don't blame you. Everybody want more comfortable. And the more, the better, I guess. Huh? Then you could find another master who are richer. Yeah. Sure, there are some richer, you know? Yes. Uh, they don't even know what to do with their money. <laughs> so maybe you go there, huh? Don't stay in here and doing this kind of stuff. That, suppose, you know, such a good meditation practice and giving so that lowly purpose. You understand? Using it to force people to give what they don't want. When I was younger, you know, when I just began my mission, yeah, I had some uh, disciple became a resident, eh? monks and nuns, and we didn't have much money, but we we walk around and look around. One of the residents, oh, master, this is a very good place. If we have this, huh? Every Sunday, people can come sit meditate better because we rented a small place. Because more and more people come, and I don't have place for them to sit in the rain, so we rented a place with whatever little money I have. At that time, we just plant vegetable, and I make like soya sprout to sell. And because the, that place was full of ghosts, and nobody ever buy that place for a long time, you know, since Qing Dynasty or something. Everybody was afraid of that place, or so they didn't buy it, you know, for a long time. And the grass even grow into the driveway, cover the driveway, you know. It even uh, sprouted and piercing through the asphalt road and grow on the road. So when we came, we have to clear in order to walk in the house. So you know how long people have not lived there. The grass is taller than the tallest guy in this house. And it grow also inside the yard and through into the living room and everything. <laughs> you know, nearby and, you know, around the house is completely covered by grass, uh, this tall, you know, tall, very tall grass, and the hard kind of grass. The grass, when you look at it, you thought it's like sugar cane. <laughs> yeah, that big, you know, this kind of grass, you know, big, big, bigger. So we had to clear all that in order to go inside to, to live and clean up and wash everything, you know, we'll do it together. And then we have a little living room for meditation hall. But, you know, one of my uh, so-called uh, nun at that time, she, we walk around this infinity sometimes. At that time, we didn't even have car. So we walk around, she said, Oh, Master, this house very nice. <laughs> I said, Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. And she said, Master, why don't you use your magical power to kick this guy out? <laughs> <laughs> and then we can, you know, buy it cheap or something. Oh, kind of resident, now you know. <laughs> but later she knew she's wrong, of course, and she told me, "Yeah, that's correct. That master scolded me." Yeah, <laughs> I scolded her. I said, "You should never have such, a, you know, incorrect thought like that in your head. This is people's house." Yeah. She said, "Yeah, but he don't have any merit, master. He eat meat. He drink wine. How does he have a bigger house than you have?" <laughs> you know, she's saying, I'm a master, I should have better. I said, well, that's his merit, you know? Maybe he's nobody at this lifetime, but maybe last life he has done something good, yeah? I've uh, given to people or do some very uh, meritorious deed. So in this lifetime, he enjoy his merit. That belongs to him. So I said to her, well, you know, you don't use magical power for this thing. You should know that. But she was new, you know, and I don't scold her too much. But I said, this is a very wicked idea that you have. You should not have this. It's very bad for you. We don't take people's house or things away and don't use the power to do that. 
<laughs> above all, no, not the power. Live in a sort of ghost house, you know, <laughs> a rented and ghost infested house. Yeah, but that was already the best. Later on, we don't even have that house. <laughs> Because after we live there for a long time, the, uh, we clean it well and we make everything nice, we plant vegetables and all that, it looks very neat and tidy, and nobody afraid anymore, so when they come in, they look, you know, even look from outside, people walk in and out, you know, very happily, and especially at that time, they still wear monks and nuns' robe, you know, they look very dignified. If the monks live there, it must be a lot of merit, so uh, they sell it immediately. And we didn't know that. They didn't even tell us. Yeah. So later we moved out, moved to the riverside. <laughs> Have a bigger environment, you know, <laughs> the sky <laughs> and <laughs> the earth, all to ourselves. Yeah. Was it dangerous sometimes? You know, when the water swell up because when it rain on the source, you don't know it, and the water come out very quickly. <laughs> One time we almost drowned. <laughs> But luckily, I knew it. So every day, I position one guy, huh? one monk or one attack turn to, to watch the water. <laughs> luckily, he didn't meditate very deep that day. So <laughs> they tell us, oh, let's go, let's go quick. <laughs> Everybody run, run, run. <laughs> yeah. I was young and, you know, a little bit carefree. I have to tell you that I was too carefree. Yeah, sometimes we just drink water from the river and we don't know where the river comes from. And we <laughs> couldn't care less, you know. And sometimes we don't even know, well, there's no, no river even, you know. There's a water came from somewhere, we just see the water and we filter it and then we use it. Yeah, because we cannot keep staying in one place too long, you know, at that time. Yeah, yeah so, okay, when I give you initiation, before initiation, you know the five precepts first. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because we cannot build a greatness and spiritual splendor on something that is as shaky as immoral behavior. Do you understand me? Even if you have power, you became very powerful, but you don't have enough moral standard. You became only the king of illusion, a maya. You can never become Buddha. You can never become anything great. Yeah? Just power. You see, that's why in the old time when they select a king or a politician to work for the people, they look on the moral standard. Hmm? Oh, nowadays, maybe still some, <laughs> but... You know, if you want to be something great, you have to build it on something great, yeah? You can't become a Buddha and then still in, at the same time and doing all kind of nonsense stuff, yeah? Right? Okay, so now you know, huh? And the reason I also let you pay here, if I don't let you pay, I have a better reputation. Oh, Master Generous, anybody can come to a house, eat anything they want. I could be like that, but I don't want that. I don't care about my reputation. I care that you be a good person, here and everywhere. It start from here, okay? Your good manner, good standard begins at home. This is your home. You show it to me first. I train you from here first. You be independent. You look after yourself before you can both that you are taking care of sentient beings and saving the planet. Do you understand me? Yes. So for that reason, you pay wherever you go. Yeah? All the residents, when they come and live in your house, do they pay? Yes. Anybody who holds a resident, one? Who, who? Raise hand. Yeah, okay. Did they pay you? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I told you. You also? Yeah. They pay you? Yeah. Yeah, I, that's what I taught them. You see? They have to bring their own sleeping bag, bring their own bowl and whatever utensil. You know, just a bowl and chopstick, whatever. 
so that they don't bother you, yeah? So you don't have to wash the blanket after they left. Even then they have to pay for their meal and an extra if they go in your car or whatever. They did pay, right? See? Right? Yes or no? Yes. Good. So you see what I mean? Yeah? Charity begins at home. Good manner also begins at home. You see, if a child don't behave well, they blame the mother and the father, no? They say, oh, your parents don't teach you well. Yeah? But I do teach you well. We have so many lectures and DVD and every month uh, news, news magazine. Although I don't say all the time on the lecture, like you must keep the five precepts, but the teaching, the talking, everything emphasizing on that as well. Yeah? All kind of examples, all kind of lessons from the old time and all that is to emphasize the clean living. Yeah? You see Kabir, huh? I told you the story, how clean Kabir was. Yeah? How pure he is. And I tell you the story also, Mirabai, the princess, who give his master, who is a you know, poor cobbler or something, uh, a diamond which he could, you know, sell and live the whole life, you know, nicely, but he did not take it. She put it on the roof and it will still stay there for a long time until she come back. And she asked, Master, why are you still poor like this? Why are you still working? And earn your living. I give you a diamond. I put it there in front of your door. And the master said, wherever you put it, it's still there. Go get it. <laughs> you understand? Yes. What for you listen to all this story and not learning anything from it? I'm not trying to amuse you by being a good storyteller or a good translator from the old books or something like that. These are for you to digest and make it your own uh, manner, your own uh, good nature, your own uh, moral standard. Understand me? I am your master. And you know my money is not for myself. My money could be used to benefit the multitude, yeah, through different channels. And you still want to keep it stuck there just for 40, 50 people, for yourself just because you like it. It's no good, is it? Huh? No. Do you understand the consequence? Yes. How can this be all these years? I ask myself. It hurts me, you know. It hurts my feeling. You are my disciples. Not only you don't contribute, you want to take. What a shame. No? Yes. And because you pay here, somebody is complaining in the heart. You don't have to pay, I told you already. But if you have the money, you pay. Because this is not a homeless shelter, no? And you are not uh, uh, disabled of some kind, yeah? If you don't have money, of course, sometimes you lost your job or something, or you just be in trouble, then you don't pay. Nobody say anything. It has been always like that, yeah? All this time, we don't ever pay even. They go to Meoli, nobody pay nothing. It's not like this. But then I thought, okay, why not, huh? <laughs> Let them begin. Now, this uh, practice a long time already. They should be a helper to the societies instead of being uh, uh, somebody who rely on someone else, you know, something like that. I don't, I don't like it. But of course we never check who pay, who not pay. Eh? Did I ever scold somebody who did not pay here? No. no. Never. I don't even ask who pay, who not. It's just for you to, to feel good about yourself, yeah? That you are independent and you're capable of taking care of yourself and you correct everywhere you go, that's it. Okay? But in case if it's too much, then you don't pay that much. You know, you pay less or you don't, whatever. But there should be the standard that you, you, you look up to, okay, I should take care of myself, you see? Because that means you're working at home. <laughs> you go into work and you contribute something, okay? You know what I mean? To the society. We grow up this much, we eat so much food from this world already, okay? We own so much, 
to the society there, and not only human beings, we own to animals, to insects, who pollinate our food. You understand me? Yes. So if we pay a little bit back, that is just fair. Not even good yet. It's just fair. You see what I mean? Just fair, just enough, just the way we should do. Hmm? Well, unless you become a monk or nun or something, and you don't work, but you work in a different way. You see what I mean? In the spiritual field. Okay, that's different. Or if you lost your job and you don't have money, okay, it's no problem. It's not a question like you must <laughs> pay. It's a question of your dignity. Understand me? Yeah? All right. You capish? Yes. 